Welcome to the fifth part in my tutorial series, in which I cover the basics of using Unity's XR Interaction Toolkit. This video assumes that you have completed all the previous tutorials in this series. If you have not, then you can find a link to the full tutorial series playlist in the description. I recommend that you follow along from the beginning. Anyway, thus far we have created a simple VR scene. We have set up a simple XR rig with interaction components attached to our virtual controllers. At this point, you should be able to grab a cube with your right hand controller. For the next few tutorials, we will focus on direct, or near, interactions. We will take a closer look at both the XR Direct Interactor and the XR Grab Interactable components. We will explore the various settings and options available in each component and see how these are used in defining our interactions. However, since there is a lot to cover, in this tutorial we will focus specifically on the XR Direct Interactor. The XR Grab Interactable will be covered in the next video. Just a quick reminder, when working with the XR Interaction Toolkit, there is this concept of the Interactor and Interactable Pair, whereby the Interactor, which is usually attached to some kind of virtual controller or hand, acts upon an interactable. An interactable would be any kind of interactive object. It could be something you pick up, or a lever, or a button for instance. Let's take a look at an example interactor in our scene. The XR Direct Interactor Component. In the Unity Editor, make sure that you have the scene that you have been working on open. In the Hierarchy view, find the XR Origin and make sure it is fully expanded. Drill down into it and you will find the right hand controller game object. Click on this. If you look at the inspector, you will notice that our right hand controller has the XR Direct Interactor component attached. The XR Direct Interactor enables near field interactions. It gives our right hand controller the ability to influence interactables directly by touching them. So let's take a look at this component and its various settings. Let's start from the top. The first property is a reference to the Interaction Manager. The XR Interaction Manager acts as an intermediary between interactors and interactables, and XRI requires at least one of these to be present in your scene for interactions to function. In fact, the Interaction Manager should be created automatically when you drop the XR origin into your scene. You can also have multiple interaction managers in your scene if you wish, and each one could be assigned different sets of interactors and interactables. You will notice that I have explicitly referenced the interaction manager in the XR Direct Interactor. It's not strictly necessary to do so however, as if you leave the property blank, the XR Direct Interactor will register itself with the first valid interaction manager it can find when the scene is run. The next property on the Direct Interactor is the Interaction Layer Mask. So, what is this Interaction Layer Mask, and what is it used for? Well, XRI gives you the option to assign interactors and interactables to specific interaction layers. Now, in order for an interaction to occur between an interactor and interactable, they must have at least one interaction layer in common, in their Interaction Layer Mask. Let me quickly give you an example. Let's say you have a set of grabbable objects that should only be picked up through direct contact with your controller. Let's call this set of objects pickups. Now, remember the grab interactable object that we dropped into the scene previously? It's a simple grey cube. Let's assume that we want it to be a pickup, that is, only grabbable through direct interaction. Select the grab interactable in the scene hierarchy. Go to the XR Grab Interactable Component in the Inspector Panel. Right click on the Interaction Layer Mask menu. From the drop down, select Add Layer. Now, in the Inspector Panel, make sure the Interaction Layers list is expanded. You will see that there are a number of empty slots. Select an empty slot and name the layer Pickups. Now, reselect the Grab Interactable and go back to the XR Grab Interactable Component. Once again, select the Interaction Layer Mask menu. First, select Nothing from the drop-down menu. 
This will ensure that the object is removed from all interaction layers. Next, select our newly created pickups layer. Our grabbable interactable cube is now assigned to the pickups layer and only the pickups layer. This means that only interactors that include pickups in their interaction layer mask will be able to interact with this object. To demonstrate, let's reselect the right hand controller. In the inspector, find the XR Direct Interactor component. The interaction layer mask is set to everything at the moment, which means that our interactor will act upon interactables irrespective of which layers they are assigned to. Let's make it so that our right hand controller can only interact with pickups. Set the interaction layer mask to nothing, and then set it to pickups. Next, go to the left hand controller and find the XR Ray Interactor. Here we will set the interaction layer mask to only respond to interactables on the default layer. Finally, in order to compare behaviours, let's drop a second grab interactable into the scene. Note that the second grab interactable has its interaction layer mask set to default. Ok, let's test our scene to see what effect the interaction layer mask settings have. As expected, the right hand controller can pick up the interactable cube on the right, which is set to the pickups interaction layer. We cannot pick up the cube on the left with our right hand controller, as the controller is set to interact with pickups exclusively and the left cube exists on the default interaction layer. We can interact with the left hand cube via the left hand controller however, as they are both on the same default layer. The left hand controller is unable to interact with the right hand cube though. Ok, I hope this helps you understand interaction layer masks. You can delete the extra cube if you like, and set the interaction layer masks on the controllers and the remaining cube back to their initial states. Let's move on to the next item. Reselect the right hand controller. Find the XR Direct Interactor component in the inspector. The next property is called Attach Transform. The Attach Transform can be used to reference a specific transform on the controller. This transform will then become the point to which interactive objects attach when they are grabbed by the controller. To demonstrate, I'm going to create an empty game object on the right hand controller. I'll call the object attach point, which will be our attach transform. I'm going to place the transform at a nonsensical position relative to the controller, just to make the effect of the attach transform obvious. Reselect the right hand controller, and find the XR Direct Interactor component in the inspector. Now, I'm going to drag the attach point from the hierarchy view into the attach transform slot in the inspector. Now, let's play the scene again. You can see that the interactive cube, when grabbed, is attaching itself to the attach point, which is above the controller. Let's go back to the editor, remove the attach transform reference, and take a look at the next property. It's called Select Action Trigger. This defines how the select action triggers an interaction. Selecting an object in this context means grabbing it. The select action is currently bound to the grip button on your touch controller. So essentially, the select action trigger is going to determine how the grip button input will trigger grabbing and releasing the grab interactable cube. There are four modes that the select action trigger can be set to, namely state, state change, toggle and sticky. I'll just briefly explain how these modes affect the grabbing behaviour. The default select action trigger mode is state. When in state mode, the controller simply needs to be in the select action state while intersecting the interactable cube's trigger zone in order to trigger the grab interaction. You can press the grip i.e. select button while outside the cube's trigger zone, hold it down and then touch the cube. Or you can press select while touching the cube. The cube will be grabbed in both cases. Releasing the select button will drop the cube. The next mode is State Changed. In this mode, in order to pick up the interactable cube, your controller's collider will need to be touching the cube, 
when you press the select button. The third select action trigger mode is toggle. When first grabbing the cube, toggle mode behaves in a similar way to select change. However, when you release the button, you will notice that the cube remains attached to the controller. You will need to press the select button once more for the cube to detach. The last mode is called sticky. Sticky mode behaves similarly to toggle. The only difference is this. To detach the grab cube, you essentially have to release the select button twice. As with toggle mode, the first time you release the select button, the cube remains attached. To detach it, you need to press the select button once more, and then release the button a second time. Ok, so that's the select action trigger covered. Let's move on to the next property on the XR Direct Interactor. The property is called Keep Selected Target Valid. The Keep Selected Target Valid property is used to determine whether to retain the selection of an interactable after initially selecting it, even when it is no longer a valid target. The property is set to true by default on the XR Direct Interactor, and you should leave it like this for grabbing objects. You will want to set it to false for teleportation. You will see the reason why when we cover the teleporting system in a future video. The next property is Hide Controller on Select. It's pretty easy to show you what this does. Let's tick the checkbox and play the scene. As you can see, as soon as I grab the cube, the controller is hidden. If I release the cube, the controller becomes visible again. Next up is the property Allow Hover Activate. Hovering means that you are touching an object without selecting, or in our case grabbing it. You will usually activate an interactive object by first selecting it, and then pressing the trigger button. Let me show you an example. Here I have a lighter which I can grab, or in other words select, with my controller. Now while I'm holding the lighter, I can press the trigger button and the lighter will activate. In this case, the flame ignites at the end of the lighter. However, I can only activate the lighter, and hence ignite the flame, if I am holding it. Now let's go back to the XR Direct Interactor and tick Allow Hovered Activate. Let's replay the scene and see what effect this has on our lighter. Notice I can now activate the lighter without first grabbing, i.e. selecting it. Let's go back to the Unity Editor, and let's return to the XR Direct Interactor. We will skip over Target Priority Mode for now. I would like to do a deep dive into Target Priority at a later date and it's not something to be overly concerned about when starting out with XRI. The final property that we are going to look at is Starting Selected Interactable. This is very straightforward. Basically, if you drop an interactable in here, it will automatically be selected on startup. So, if I drag and drop our grab interactable cube into the slot, and play the scene, my right hand controller will automatically be holding the cube. Be aware however, you will want to set the select action trigger to either toggle or sticky, to prevent the object from being immediately dropped. Ok, so that's about it. There are some other settings hidden in the expandable menus at the bottom of the XR Direct Interactor, but we will leave those for now. If you found this video useful, please like and subscribe. But for now, goodbye and happy questing.